Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries and as always, I am so glad that you decided to spend a few moments with me today. Today I want to talk about what it means to be a peacemaker, especially as it relates to your journey with Jesus Christ, your spiritual journey. So if that is something that you would like to join me in today, let's just hop right into the video. I want to start out by asking the question, are you a peacemaker? It's a loaded question, I know. But Jesus says something very important to us in his Sermon on the Mount. It's tucked away there in the Beatitudes found in the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew. In verse 9, it says this, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. And this is according to the King James text. I'm currently working my way through a book entitled Studies on the Sermon on the Mount, and it's by an author by the name of Martin Lloyd-Jones. And I say working my way through this book because I am doing just that. I started working through it last fall, and it's a 585 book, and I'm only on page 106. In fact, I'm only on the 11th chapter of these 30 chapters of this book, but it is indeed a remarkable read, especially for anybody who is looking to tackle the hard truths in Scripture. I found myself here in the seventh beatitude, and it's all about being a peacemaker. Now, you and I might think of peace as a little bit differently than how scripture defines it. Typically, when we think of peace, we think of anything that makes us happy or joy-filled or content. We think about it in terms of getting our way. We think about it as an undisturbance from trouble, problems, and most importantly, conflict. Why do we do this? I think that it's because, unfortunately, in our human condition, we are at best reduced to self-centeredness. We look at everything in terms of the effect that it's going to have on us, how it's going to affect us. And plain and simple, we avoid anything and everything that causes us any amount of displeasure or discomfort. And we call this peace. We label this in our life as peace. And so many of us seek peace every day of our life. But here I want to suggest to you today that the Lord's definition of peace is quite different. Peace here is talking about the condition in which we see ourselves through the lens of Christ Jesus. It's taking a proper, right view of ourselves in our sin, in our depravity, and in our unworthiness, and having an entirely new outlook, a new nature, and a new heart considering a new life altogether found in Jesus Christ. It's being completely rid of envy and pride and jealousy and sensitivity and defensiveness. It has nothing to do with getting even or settling the score, and it is indeed cleansed from all unrighteousness. Most importantly, being a peacemaker is removing any kind of self-interest or self-concern from our lives. The opposite of being a peacemaker is often where we find ourselves. It's this looking at everything in terms of how something will affect me. And unfortunately, what we do is we often sacrifice so much at the altar of pride, and we call that peace. And can I suggest to you today that this is simply not true? A peacemaker has only one concern, and that is the glory of God among men. That was the central key focus of the life of King Jesus. His one interest, his one central key interest in his life, in his life as a man, was the glory of God. His concern wasn't to pacify his hearers. His concern wasn't to make his disciples more happy or more content with themselves. His concern was all for the glory of God. And so our concern, just like Jesus' concern, ought to be for the glory of God. Then in this book that I'm reading by Martin Lloyd-Jones, he says this. He says, we are to spend our day trying to minister to that glory. 
Wow, think about that, ministering to the glory of God. And that is what all of the Christian life ought to be. Imagine with me for a minute the difference that this kind of attitude from the people of God might have on the rest of the world. Jones says this in his book. He says, he, the peacemaker, knows that God made man perfect and that the world was meant originally to be a paradise. So when he sees an individual or international disputes happening, quarrels happening, arguments happening, he sees something that is detracting from the glory of God. Wow. Could you and I begin to see evil that is all around us every single day as simply something that is detracting from the glory of God? Not, you have offended me, but rather, you have offended God's glory. Not, you have hurt me, but you have grieved the Holy Spirit. You have grieved God's glory. You know, it's righteous anger, and it's only righteous anger because it is aimed completely at one target, and that is the glory of God. I wrote it down, this list of D words that the evil around us does. It's all crafted to destroy us by the power that manages this world, and we know him by his name, Satan. Take a look at this list. All the evil in the world serves to distract from the glory of God, but it also does these things. It disrupts us, it disables us, disarms us, debilitates us, distracts us, deters us, depreciates our value, diminishes, discounts, discredits, discourages, delays, disadvantages us, dissuades us, depresses us, and disheartens us. These are the designs and the aims of evil. The peacemaker are children of God. Remember in the King James Version that we just read, it says that blessed are the peacemakers for they are the children of God. And what you and I are to do, being peacemakers that makes us children of God, is to repeat what the Lord did. And Jesus himself was called the Prince of Peace. But I also want to remind you what Jesus says in Luke 12, 51. He says, Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. No, I tell you, I came to bring division. And then again in Matthew 10, 34, he says, Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. His truth, his word. He came to bring that division. He knew that we were going to need to make a decision in this life for Jesus. You and I are going to need to make a decision. Will we be a peacemaker whose primary focus is not self-preservation or self-love, but rather the glory of God in this place while we are here? Because let me tell you, that is why Jesus came. And that's the reason why we are here, is to be peacemakers, but to be peacemakers, not to do things and make decisions that bring peace among all people as it relates to their human pleasure, but to bring peace that honors God, to do things that diminish the darkness in this world and to usher in the light of Jesus Christ. So many people are consumed, I think, with this one thought, especially as of late. We say things like, what is wrong with the world? I had a Christian ask me recently, what has happened to the world, Wendy? To which I responded, sin, with a period. That's what's happened. Sin and evil that is all around us. But can I tell you that it's been here since the very beginning of time? You may be more sensitive to it now and more aware of its position now that you're closer to the Lord, but it's always been there. We act surprised by sin and suffering, and yet if we read our Bibles regularly and we understood sin rightly, we wouldn't be so shocked when the last thing this sin-sick place possesses is peace. The question for any of us, and for all of us actually, to wrestle with is this. Will we be peacemakers in a hurting, dying, hellbound world? Peacemakers are different. 
They look different than the rest of the world. Maybe you've seen them. Maybe you've encountered them. Maybe you are one. But what I can tell you is that peacemakers are different. They're not always cheery happy, joy-filled people who maintain these fake smiles, but they are people who have chosen to stand apart from the sin and the suffering. And they suffer less as a result because their aim is away from this fallen world. They can be peace-filled because in this enemy territory, in this territory that we live in, that we are a foreign to, they find no comfort. And the peace that passes all understanding is the peace that comes from Jesus and a righteous disposition for the glory of God. Listen, peace isn't this principle to adhere to. It's a practice to attend to, preserving the glory of God. It's praying daily for God to make us an accurate reflection and to be a reproducer of the Prince of Peace. It really, really matters. And in wrapping up, I want to say these final thoughts, these maybe even these repeated thoughts to you so that we can really understand this as we come to a close in this video. The peacemaker, remember, has one concern, and that is the glory of God among men. And all peacemakers do is trying to minister to that glory. All evil around us only serves at detracting us from the glory of God. To be a peacemaker, you have to have four things, and I believe it's very specific spelled out, especially in these scriptures. You must have an entirely new outlook on life. You must have a new nature. You must have a new heart, and you must have a pure soul. These are the four things that I believe that we need to have in order to accurately reproduce the peace that Jesus meant for us to have here in the earth. You cannot possess a heart that is filled with envy or distrust or jealousy when you are too sensitive, when you are touchy to the things that people say to you, thinking too much about what others think of you instead of what God thinks of you and being defensive at all. These are the attributes, these are the characteristics that we cannot have if we want to be a peacemaker. That heart our heart must be cleansed of all ugliness before it can be a peacemaker. We must have an entirely new view of ourselves. In other words, we have to be meek. We have to be entirely delivered from self, from any self-interest and from any self-concern. As long as you and I are thinking too much about ourselves, we cannot be a maker of peace. A peacemaker is one who is not always looking at everything in terms of how it's going to affect me. It enters into every situation bringing the glory of God to that situation. We have to be absolutely neutral to bring two opposing sides together. We have to be neutral. We have to maintain a peace, but it always has to be for the reason of bringing honor and glory to God. It is reproducing His nature in the world. It is stepping into every situation as a peace-filled person because we know who we are and we know whose we are. Friend, I hope that this has given you an entirely new view on what it means to be a peacemaker, what it means to maintain peace in this fallen world. If you have liked this video, would you just give it a huge thumbs up? Would you subscribe to this channel? Most importantly, would you share this with someone who needs to know? Just share this video with someone that you know and love, someone who needs to be reminded of these truths today. Friend, I am so glad that you are here. I value your time. I love when you and I can just sit down and talk about these hard subjects together because it makes the road so much more enjoyable to travel. Friend, I thank you again for being here today and I'm already looking forward to my next video. In the meantime, I pray that you have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye friend.